Hello everyone, this is John Gonzalez from MLive.com. Welcome to the special MLive podcast. We talked to comedian Alonzo Bowden on today's show where we cover a lot of topics including politics. Uh, President Trump is on his mind. But we're also talking about Jay Leno, uh, the Me Too movement and how it pertains to his latest special, Heavy Lightweight, which you can listen to right now at Amazon Prime Video. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Michigan. He's performed here many times and has some opinions about our state. Uh, we also talk about some of the early days of hip-hop and rap. He's originally from Queens, New York, and uh, we both are about the same age, so we share some commonalities there as well. So, folks, tune in. Here is Alonzo Bowden, who's performing at Dr. Grin's Comedy Club at The Bob this weekend, December 19th to 21. More information at thebob.com. If you want to learn more about Alonzo, go to alonzobowden.com. Hey, Alonzo, how you doing? I'm great, man. I'm great. Looking forward to Grand Rapids. It's too warm here in L.A. <laughs> you, you just took my first question. Where, where are you? So, <laughs> this is going to be a fun I interview. Home, I am. <laughs> Actually, in this moment, I'm in the heart of Hollywood. Ah, what does the heart of Hollywood look like? Well, I am just off of Hollywood and Vine and uh, looking pretty good at the moment. Block's kind of empty, a few buses passing by, and I just had a, I'm not sure, I think transgender person pass me on a bicycle. So, you know, I know where I'm at. <laughs> well, so great to talk to you. Uh, we're looking forward to your show, like you said, in Grand Rapids coming uh, here uh, later in the month of December at Dr. Grin's Comedy Club. We'll have all the information, uh, folks, on uh, on the link to the website on MLive.com and uh, Dr. Grin's also their website. We'll get a link, get you all the links there. Where do you hit? Are you hissing or something? Am I what? Hissing? H- hissing, yeah. No, that, what you just heard was bus. Oh, the bus. Okay, all right. Yeah, I do know that sound because that'll, that'll pop up <laughs> as, as, a, as a hissing sound when cars go by, so... Um, okay, good. Yeah. Now, now that we know what that that will sound like, that's great. All right, so no, I just... it wasn't me personally hissing at you, John. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to follow uh, your format of your latest special, Heavy Lightweight, and kind of uh, which is available, by the way, on Amazon Prime Video, because uh, you kind of go back and forth between heavy and lightweight topics, right? I try to, you know, I try to break it up. I mean, if you look at the news cycle and the insanity we're living in, if I did a one hour of all real topical stuff, I think the people would leave angry or sad or depressed or who knows what. So I try to lighten it up. But here's the thing. I got complaints on that special about the lightweight stuff. I had a woman complain to me about a joke about yoga pants. Why were they they complaining about it? (laughs) She said that I can't make a joke about yoga pants and support me. Uh-huh. I said, yes, I can. The point being that uh, we live in a culture that no matter what you do on the comedy stage, somebody's going to be offended. Right. So we might as well just keep doing what we do. <laughs> well, I will. Uh, I will uh, get back to my format here that I kind of scripted out for you. Um, we'll see if it if it if it works. If it doesn't, well, then we'll just figure this out later. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to start with something light. How about that? How do you really feel about Donald Trump? (laughs) Oh, wow. Where do I start? Um, I don't know if I'm as angry as him as I am at America for doing this. Uh, He is who he is. Um, Ignorant, uninformed, uh, racist. Uh, Did I mention ignorant? Let me say one more time. Ignorant. Uh, the uh, master manipulator yeah. the master manipulator and the press unfortunately is trapped in the manipulation and the uh, yeah so that I could keep going but why bother let's just say I'm not a fan yeah no you, you certainly get that if you consume any of your content whether it's your podcast or your show or, or whatever I was really surprised listening to the podcast how how much you delved into politics. I guess I didn't realize that about you. Have you always been into politics? Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because it's kind of the power structure of the country, and it's also uh, ooh, it's how we think, you know. And it's I'll tell you what it is, what else it is, John. It's disappointing. 
it's disappointing that we don't do better as a nation. Yeah. I mean, there's no excuse for our Senate. There is no excuse for Mitch McConnell and his boys. They're, they're not, right now they're protecting Donald Trump basically for treason, for going to a foreign country and asking for help in our election, you know? Yeah. And it, it's, it, there's so much, sorry for getting all into this, but, you know, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much party before nation, and it's just utterly ridiculous. And then the other thing, that the comical part, is their supporters. 95% of uh, Republicans don't make enough money to be Republicans. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't even know what to say about that. But 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 you're they're, they're, <laughs> <clears throat> the uh, well. We we live in in Michigan, right? And the state has its share of of issues. And, and the state, you know, uh, leaned toward Trump um, in the last election. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens this next election. Election because um, who knows, right? I just saw the news today. Did, did uh, Kamala uh, Harris drop out of the race? I heard she was going to. I haven't heard yet, but I did hear she was going to. Uh, she wasn't raising enough money, which is kind of sad that, you know, our, poli- our political system, right, it's kind of like golf, like who's the top money winner. <laughs> you know? Right. But uh, re- regarding Michigan and the last election, the Democrats definitely blew it by taking Michigan for granted. Don't take any place for granted. Right. Michigan's got issues. You go to Michigan. So... That was where they blew it. Don't get me started on the Democrats and their incredible <laughs> ability to lose from the front. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have a lot of fun uh, when we actually will. Well, hopefully, we'll get a chance to meet when you're in Grand Rapids, and we'll talk some more. But speaking of Michigan, uh, and you, you know, you you people know you from Last Comic Standing. They know you from uh, Wait Wait Don't Tell Me on NPR. Um, you've really done a great job um, of getting out there and uh, TV film, uh, really making a name for yourself in your career. Um, but I'm sure you've been to Michigan before. Outside of politics, what do you know about Michigan? I have been to Michigan plenty of times, and, and I actually love Detroit. Um, I am the host, well, I have been for a few times, for the Above and Beyond Awards. Excuse me, it's a blue Rolls Royce drives past me, and I wonder where I went wrong in life. I know well, you're. I, I know you're a car. Anyway. I know you're a car guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the Above and Beyond Awards in Detroit is for the first responders, and I got to host it. So I got to meet you know the the chief of the police and and uh, the captain of the head of the fire department and kind of tour downtown Detroit. And I and I love what's going on there. Grand Rapids is fun. I've been coming to the Bob for years. I love that you know, four stories of comedy. So what do I know about Detroit? Uh, obviously the car business. And right. yes, I have had Cadillac, so I do qualify. Um, I've done shows in Ann Arbor. I did Wait Wait in Ann Arbor, University of Michigan. Small school, small school, kind of quiet, but it seems to be doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> now when it comes to football. <laughs> yeah, well, not now, yeah. you know. But basketball looks. Uh, how would they? How would they describe it? A storied history on the gridiron. That's what they would say. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I I like downtown Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all good. I've had I've had good times in Michigan. Can get a bit nippy in the winter. Yeah. I've even been up in the the what they call the UP Upper Michigan. Upper Peninsula. Yeah. Upper Peninsula. I've been up there. I did. Uh, there was a casino. Uh huh. In the, I don't know if we call it an Indian casino or a Native American casino or what we call it now. But I did a show up there and had a great time. So, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Michigan. Well, we'll switch it to something maybe a little more heavy. Um, uh, Jay Leno's been in the news uh, just lately with the whole America's Got Talent. Uh, I saw some stories, also on, on TMZ for that matter that you came out in support of Jay Leno. Um, do you want to clarify that at all? Or, you know, um, what do you have to say about yeah, the whole yeah. thing? Uh, you know, I kind of, um, I've done TMZ a few times, and I will say this is the first time they sandbagged me. Okay. Because it was Thanksgiving. We're at the Laugh Factory. We're doing the charity dinner show. So TMZ says they want to talk, and I didn't think they wanted to get, you know, heavy. So they, they asked about this joke Jay Leno did, and the joke wasn't racist. It's a joke, and I said it. It's an old school 
cool stereotype joke. You know, it, it's uh, it's playing off of a stereotype of Korean people. So, and I said that, you know, I, I wish the world was such that we could consider Jay Leno racist. Do you know how gentle the world would be mm-hmm. if Leno would? I mean, Jay's a great guy. I've known Jay a long time. Yeah. So, anyway... So I said that. Now, they were asking about Gabriel Union. So the part they edited out was when I said that this racist joke, I don't believe this is why Gabriel Union was fired. I believe this is the cover story that the network's using. But actually, it it had to do some crazy thing about her hair. Um, A problem they have with black women and black women's hair is ridiculous. All right? If if you're an old white guy who runs the studio, Trust black women that they know how to do their hair, right? Sure. To, to just stop it with that issue. And that uh, I think Gabrielle Union, you know, she said that she was, uh, I can't quote exactly, but basically railroaded and fired from the show. And I believe that. Mm-hmm. So all of that part was taken out. And all they said was that I support Jay Leno and uh, on the joke about being racist. And the way they wrote it made me look. Uh, like I'm anti-Gabriel Union, which is ridiculous. I'm glad you clarified that because, um, you know, because the joke never made the show, uh, for one, it was edited out, um, but obviously a lot has surfaced about, you know, what's going on there with the show. But the way I read that story on TMZ, I said, boy, I, I, not that I know you very well, but just in listening and watching and doing my research, it just felt, it didn't feel right. The TMZ articles, like, felt like something was wrong. Um, and that's why I wanted to ask you about that. Well, thank you, thank you. And that, you know, that's what happens with uh, with press and media. Interestingly, I was talking with uh, Jamie Fox about. It. I crossed paths with Jamie, and we were just talking a little about this about comics in the news. And it, it's almost like you can't win, you know, because anything you say, this joke is racist, that joke is sexist, or you're you're supporting this or doing that. It's like, hey man, we're on a comedy stage. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, right. It's, I I don't know. I I have a thing in my act where I talk about it. The most important word in the English language is context, and that's the word we seem to lose repeatedly. Yeah, because we're in a soundbite society. So. Um, yeah, exactly. Cer- certainly makes sense. All right, yeah. so we'll, we'll lighten things up a little bit. Uh, you and I are are about the same age. Um, you grew up, I grew up in Michigan, but you grew up in, in Queens. And, uh, since we're about the same age, uh, I would love to know about your upbringing, especially as it pertains to the early days of hip hop, because I remember growing up in Michigan, there goes like a, a, a bus or something. Uh, I remember growing up in the early days of Michigan and, and learning about hip hop from some friends from Detroit and, uh, all this stuff was coming out, you know. You know, this was way back to like Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, Curtis Blow, and uh, those are some pretty amazing acts that were coming out. You were in the middle of all that. What was it like growing up at that time? Well, let me tell you, my mother's one great failing was telling me to stay in school when I should have been hanging out on the corner and in the park <laughs> learning to rap. And maybe the family would have had some money by now. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up southeast. Queens. I grew up in an area called St. Albany. To give you an idea, some of the hip hop that came out of Southeast Queens, uh, Run DMC, yeah. LL Cool J, Ed Lover, Tribe Called Quest. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I remember DJs in the park. That's where they worked. They were spinning in the park. There were rappers in the park. And it, it you know, hip hop, yeah, hip hop started. In New York, and in that time, in the late 70s to the early 80s, yeah, we had, you know, every, like, the Sugar Hill Gang obviously was the first big commercial hit, but, but Grandmaster Flash was out there, uh, the, Fever, the Fever was a club up in the Bronx, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of hip-hop going on, but it was really a street movement, the voice of streets, and my favorite old-school hip-hop is the stuff like Public Enemy and, uh, you know, they, they, they had something to say, you know, uh, run DMC, and, and they were talking about what was going on in the streets. But then you had other people like, like LL Cool J, who came out with this melodic rap and did a rap love song and blew people's minds. I need love. You know, yeah. It was, 
yeah, it was a it was a great time. Um, you know, BDP Boogie Down Productions, the voices of the street, yeah. people who had something to say. And then in in the nineties, when rap kind of got into the whole, some gangster rap was okay, but when it basically got into I'm gonna kill you and I got a nicer car than you, they kind of lost me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But, no, no question about it. I, I mean, those early days though were interesting because I remember it exploding right, and I was uh, I was writing for another newspaper. And uh, they wanted me to do a story about, you know, violence at these hip hop tours. It was Run DMC and the Beastie Boys were touring, and uh, I was like, "What? What are you talking about? The audience at these concerts are eighty percent white. You know, they're uh, for first of all, you have you don't even know the audience, right? That you're going to be experiencing at these concerts because the tours by then had been had been really taking off. But I was just thinking back to those. The disconnect really be that people thought that that rap or hip hop was a fad. Yeah, yeah, they did, and it's funny because if you listen, look back, like Quincy Jones, right, the, the one of the greatest music producers of all time, he did a record back in like I think it was like 1990, 1991, and he said on the record uh, it was called Back on the Block. He said, "Yeah, rap, rap's here to stay." Yeah, you know, he saw it back then, and he. Quincy Jones is the only guy who will get like Ice T and Miles Davis on the same record. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because he was brilliant like that. But but you also had talking about white people in the crossover. You know when Run DMC hooked up with Aerosmith, that yeah. blew people's minds. It did. Yeah, nobody nobody thought of that. They they you know they were like because it was all about. Unfortunately, it was it's about segregation. You know, and you like hip hop, and we like rock. That uh, one of the things I love about music is music don't care about what color you are. Music cares about whether or not you're good. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, in my early days, I was a music critic, and I'd say there's only two two kinds of music: good and bad. You know, it's say what do you, what do you like? Yeah. I said, well, you know, what, do you like country, like hip hop, you like rock and roll. I said, no, nope, I just like good music. You know, there's only two kinds of music: good and bad. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we. So yeah, it was, but it was fun. Being in New York, being in Queens at that time, and particularly St. Albans, which uh, working class black neighborhood, mm-hmm. and I didn't know it was the hood until Fiddy mentioned it in a song. <laughs> Fortunately, we had we had sold the house by then. You know, when he dropped our property values, we'd already got out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you about Kanye West, but I'll save that for another time. Um, oh man! Yeah, yeah. All right, listen. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's get back to where, some... where do we start? Yeah, exactly. I will tell you this. Real quick, I would tell you this about Kanye. Yeah. The reason Kanye gets along with Trump, they're the same guy. <laughs> right. I don't know what I'm talking about, but as long as you write it, I'll talk about it. You know, it's all, it's about opinions and followers and popularity. Uh, no information to back it up. <laughs> well, I know how messed up I am. I almost watched his uh, special with uh, Joel Olstein the other day on TV, and I'm like, what does what this world come to, you know? Yeah, it, well, you know, you said it before, though, right? It's all about clicks and popularity and social media. I mean, that story got a lot of coverage. I will say this. Who knew when Kanye married Kim that Kim would be the voice of reason? <laughs> Uh, yeah, good, good point. Good point. Hey, speak, <laughs> speaking of, uh, I don't even know where this transition is here, but um, I wanted to know where do you land on Colin Kaepernick? Because I know you follow sports a little bit. Whoa. You know, um, so I don't think Colin Kaepernick's ever going to play again. Really? And I didn't think he would from the moment they uh, basically blackballed him for the league. This recent tryout. Well, initially, I didn't know what was going on with it. And I was like, dear God, I hope I don't have to agree with Stephen A. Smith. And uh, (laughs) fortunately, more of the story came out. So this is what I read, and this is what I understood. The reason he didn't do the NFL tryout was in the waiver that they wanted him to sign, he would have given up the right to sue for collusion. Okay, the settlement he got came from the NFL Players Union, not from a lawsuit. Right. And he still had the option to sue for collusion, and he would have given up that option. So his fear was, give up the option, the NFL films the tryout, and the NFL only shows bad passes to make him look bad. So once 
once I read that, I kind of understood why he didn't do it. Um, Colin Kaepernick is good enough to be a backup quarterback in the NFL. At this point, it's tough because to be a 31-year-old in the NFL who hasn't been playing is a tough sell at any position. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally support what he did and why he did it. I hate that the story was hijacked. This I talked about this in my act, how we have, you know, the, the disconnect. It's like he, he said, and he said it straight up, I'm protesting, you know, um, police violence against black people, police killing black people, et cetera, et cetera. And somehow it came out, I hate America and I hate the troops. So, <laughs> you know, the, the entire thing was hijacked by people who didn't want to look at the real issue and made it much easier, you know, led by Trump and Trump's people, made it much easier to make Colin Kaepernick the bad guy than to look at the real issue. Yeah. All right, well, um, I'm glad you brought it all back to Trump. No, we, <laughs> that was great. We went from, from Trump to Trump. I love that. Uh, hey, um, one, last, <laughs> one last thing. You mentioned it, uh, your show. What can people expect when they come to Grand Rapids, when you come to Grand Rapids? Because uh, I know you got a few shows at Dr. Grin's. What's that? <laughs> it's, yeah, sirens are starting. Well, we're getting toward lunchtime, so, you know, business is booming. We're in Hollywood. Um, it's going to be, you know, the same thing. I, I talk about some heavyweight stuff, some lightweight stuff. We got we got a lot going on. I am just starting to get into the Democratic candidates. I have refused that the first year of any campaign. Well, actually, we're in a constant campaign cycle. But last year, that part, I call that the reality show. Yeah. Right? There were there were 83 candidates. And, you know, it's like, look, I can't write jokes for all these people. Right. There's too many. <laughs> so I'm just starting to get into that. Uh, let's see, what else do I talk about? I, I always talk about my travels. I'm talking about being on both sides of everything, you know? Yeah. I fall in the middle on a lot of things, John, because like I said, I grew up in a black neighborhood, but I was bused to white schools, so I never learned to hate white people properly. <laughs> Therefore, I've always been in the middle, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I talk about that, about being in the middle on a, in different issues and things. Uh, technology, I love technology. Moving a little too fast. Yeah. Artificial intelligence in a world of dumb people is a dangerous thing. So, (laughs) I talk about some of that. And, and of course, uh, I got to talk about Christmas shopping. And to any men listening, if you are dumb enough to buy your woman a Peloton exercise bike for Christmas, whatever happens is on you. Let me tell you the message you don't want to send on Christmas morning. Hey, you look a little chunky. I've been thinking about this exercise bike. Yeah, don't do it, fellas. Don't. Hold on, I need to go to my computer right now and take that out of the <laughs> inbox, or out of the cart, <laughs> delete it from my cart. Uh, Alonzo Bowden, can't wait for you to come to Grand Rapids. Uh, real quick, I do have one last thing here. So, what? oh boy, that lunch hour is coming up. Uh, <laughs> we're going to ask you three rapid Sorry fire. About that. No, it's all right. Three rapid fire questions. Uh, if I see you in person, I'm going to put the questions in a hat so you do randomly draw them. So I've numbered, I've got six questions here. You only have to answer three, rapid fire. So I ranked, or they're numbered one through six. Give me give me your first number. Let's let's keep it even, two, four, six. Okay, all right. Uh, your idea of the perfect vacation. Um, a motorcycle ride through Italy uh, culminating at a MotoGP World Championship motorcycle race. Oh, all right. That that sounds like fun. Italy sounds good to me. Uh, number four, you get to ask yourself a question. Okay, I have to ask myself a question, and you have to answer it. Uh, ask myself a question. <laughs> what do I love about comedy? The creativity in the moment. All right. That's good. All right, last one, number six here. Uh, who will win the 2020 and by the way, <laughs> yeah. kind of lazy for your question to be asked myself a question. <laughs> I know. Just oh. saying, a little lazy on the journalism front. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I didn't think you'd pick that one. All right, the last one. Who will win the 2020 election? Oh, man. Uh, anyone. 
anyone but Trump. That's my hope. No, anyone not your hope. Trump. I want your prediction. Unfortunately, as of today, it looks like he's going to win. And the Democrats haven't come up with that candidate yet that has uh, a dynamic personality, someone who's galvanized us, put put the nation together. So unfortunately, as of today, and, and I just called the Ukraine and they backed me up on this. Looks like it's going to be him. Alonzo Bowden, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to, you, to your trip to Grand Rapids. I have, I have <laughs> never so hoped I am wrong. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, we'll see you.